Creating a Certificate Rule for Software Restriction Policies, or SRP, involves a few steps. First, you need to enable User Certificate Rule settings in your GPO. You can create a new GPO, or you can do it inside your SRP GPO, whichever is a better fit for your existing GPO strategy. The setting is located under Computer Configuration, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Local Policies, Security Options, System Settings, Use Certificate Rules. By default, this is disabled. If you leave it disabled, any certificate rules you create will just be ignored. So we'll enable that, click OK. Now that we've enabled it, we can go to our SRP GPO to check enforcement. In the main SRP area, click on Enforcement. Under the When Applying section, you'll need to select Enforce Certificate Rules. Just like the last setting, if you leave this one at the default, which is Ignore, any certificate rules you create will not work. And now we can actually create a certificate rule. Right-click on Additional Rules and select New Certificate Rule. Click on Browse and then change the file type to Signed Files. This will allow you to just use the program itself, assuming it actually has a certificate, of course, instead of having to extract the certificate first, save it, and then go select it here. Of course, if you already have a certificate extracted, you can certainly browse right to it. Now go ahead and find the file that you want to create a rule for. In this case, I'm going to use VLC, a popular media player. Once you've selected the file, you'll see it fills in the certificate subject name. You'll want to click on the Details button to look at the certificate to confirm that it's the correct one and to make sure it's not expired yet. It's important to remember that the Issued To field here is what your certificate rule is actually going to be created for. Any program from this company that uses this certificate will follow this rule, not just this particular executable. Click OK to close that and then look at your security level. In this instance, I'm going to select Disallowed to actually block this program. If you were using the certificate rule to allow programs in a whitelist situation, you would want to select Unrestricted. You can also type something in the description box if you want a comment that will help you remember why you created this rule, or maybe somebody else will be reading this later and you'll want them to understand why you did this. Click OK to close it. And under Additional Rules, you will now see your new rule listed with the name, the type, and the description that you just used. Now, if you run the program, you'll get an error. The actual message will vary a little bit depending on the version of Windows you're using, but it will look something like this. This will also show up in the Event Viewer application log. Knowing how it'll show here can let you set up monitoring rules with your favorite log monitoring software. The general section will show the complete details, the path, and the actual executable that was tried to run. And the log itself will show the event ID number, which will be 865 or 866 for SRP rules. And the final thing we need to look at is the Trusted Publisher setting. This is located under the main Software Restriction Policies heading as Trusted Publishers. By default, this is off, so you'll need to turn it on. And the first section lets you decide if you want users, admins, or only enterprise admins to manage the trusted publisher list. I'm not a fan of allowing users to make decisions like this, so I'm going to select admins only. The next two boxes are the ones that can really affect performance. These choices are performed each and every time a program with a certificate rule is run. The more of these rules you have, the more you may find your machines slowing down as they have to run these checks. If you select Verify Publisher, a certificate revocation list will be checked to make sure the software's certificate and signature are valid. If you select the Verify Timestamp, the certificate will be checked to ensure it hasn't expired. Both of these options make sense from a security standpoint, but because they can really slow things down, you should give careful thought to whether you want to use them or not. How likely is it that a program you're using this rule for will have its certificate revoked? If you only use this type of rule for a few programs, can you just keep track of the expiration dates yourself? For that matter, do you even care if they expire? If you leave both of these unchecked, you can use certificate rules with no performance impact, but then it is up to you to make sure the applications are safe to run. Thanks for watching.